Today we are finally putting that i7-6400T engineering sample CPU to good use in a gaming PC that may or may not rock your world. And also finally take a look at what went wrong with the ASUS RX 470 Strix. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and today you will get the lot of build, benchmarks, explanations and an added bonus witch hunt to find out the root cause of the ASUS Strix RX 470. Though starting off with the CPU, this is $100 from AliExpress.com and at that price it is quite a bargain, though the one I have here only clocks to 3.55 GHz and it needs a very Pacific motherboard and within that a very Pacific BIOS. I found that the ASRock Z170 Pro 4 worked quite well and that was around 160 Australian dollars or around 124 US dollars. I then coupled that with some Kingston OEM 2166 memory that I only took to around 2200 megahertz, but at low timings. This still makes for a really good choice for a gaming on a budget at 71 USD or 93 Australian dollars. Though, what about the PSU? Well, none other than a trusty Delta server grade power supply that I picked up for around 10 USD back in the Japan days. These things are seriously the best bang for buck sous you will get bar none. And for the cooling, I am using the Zalman CNPS 10 Speed Extreme, which I picked up for around 20 USD or about 26 Aussie. It's big and does a good job, especially for the money, not to mention it looks pretty mint too. And for the hard drive, I used a 1TB Toshiba, which I got for around 65 Australian or 49 USD. Though, of course, I would love to pick up used hard drives, except around where I live, they only ever come up in complete builds. So going you here, although not the best value, is a great alternative and one which will save a lot of time. Then we have the case, which is the Thermaltake Versa H25, which goes for around about 56 Australian dollars, or could be had for around about 45 USD on Amazon, and is a great entry level case, which got the job done. And now lastly for graphics, I went with the RX 470, which I featured in February's used part hunt vlog. And honestly, I had some headaches with it, though it was only 165 USD with shipping, though we'll talk about that later, which leaves the total of the build to 584 USD or 766 Australian dollars. So now it's time to build this thing and then benchmark it for you guys.
There it all is. The benchmarks looked pretty good once I had finally figured out what was going on with this build. And I seriously spent like a whole day troubleshooting this thing from dusk till dawn. And it ultimately had to do with the RX 470 Strix from Asus. And I tried a heap of different things. I put it in another machine, tried different drivers, tried even flashing a V BIOS a few times with different mods, and even went as far as to hex edit one BIOS to match up the checksum value. Though that still didn't work. And basically what was happening here from the get-go was very odd, but made sense in the end. And when the first time I ran 3D Mark Firestrike, the benchmark, the Strix RX 470 would essentially be dropping clocks a good 100 megahertz, even on default and even on overclocks, which was very odd since I had honestly not seen this behavior on a graphics card for a very long time. Though my worst fear that this was actually throttling was true and was finally confirmed after I had done all this witch hunting. The benchmark that confirmed it for me was when I was testing overclocks in Metro Last Light, which managed to bring the card to its knees, and when overclocked, it locked in a gradual rise in temperatures, and finally the card tripped out or thermal tripped at around 80 degrees Celsius when the readout was on the screen, which suggests a few things. Firstly, the sensor isn't as close as other manufacturers, since in the Gigabyte G1 BIOS, for example, it has a target temperature of 70 degrees, versus the Strix, which had a target temperature of 60 degrees. And now as for the G1, we'll actually have two of them, since they were the cheapest RX 470s in Australia, where ironically enough, some of the best RX 470s out there, now that I have my friend here called Captain Hindsight. And when testing the Gigabyte G1s, I found that they were perfectly fine at around 1330 MHz with voltage bumps on both. These ran in Unigy in heaven for quite some time and only ever reached around 70 degrees C, which is perfectly fine considering my ambience at around 28 degrees C at the time of testing. Though what about the Azus Strix on the other hand? Well, in my opinion, I think the Strix cooling is quite simply inadequate on certain RX 470s. And now I say this because all graphics cards are different, especially on the silicon. I probably had a poor example of an RX 470 that just liked to use more power at the stock out of the box settings. And this was ultimately just too much for the Strix RX 470 cooling solution to handle in the end. And also as for changing the thermal pace, in this case I believe it won't help that much since the cooler itself is just getting too hot to handle, no pun intended. Though, I will be revisiting this with better thermal paste and an Arctic Accelero to get to the bottom of it all. However, what it means is, in context, is that some people will not have this problem at all because the RX 470 sample they get with the RX 470 Strix cooler won't be bad at all. It'll be able to handle those stock clocks and you won't notice the throttling. It's just in the case of the sample that I got, it was just running too hot, or the actual chip was too much for the cooler to handle. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's witch hunt, and I didn't really speak about the other parts, but for what it's worth, everything except the graphics card performed really well. The case was decent, the power supply and cooler were smooth and quiet, and if you want to know more information about the CPU and motherboard combo I used here today, then I will drop a link in the description below. Though ultimately it is a shame since I do have a GTX 1080 Strix here at the moment, and it performs really well. And I know a lot of other Strix cards are the same, though all manufacturers make mistakes here and there, and at least this card still works. Anyway guys, that's about it for today. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of today's build. And also if you appreciate the witch hunts, then don't forget to hit that like button. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Sometimes it honestly pays to see a random retail review. Oxymoron, baby.